What's up you guys? It's me Jose Carlos aka The Orchid Geek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at part two of my Sunset Valley Orchids haul that I just recently made this spring. So there are many plans that I showed you in part one. In this second part I have many others that I can't wait to share with you but before we jump into the video I do want to show you an orchid that's currently blooming in my collection and I've been growing it for about three and a half four years now. Um, it's going to be be quite tall and it is called Lelio Catlea Cool Out Tree. So it is sticking to the same theme as today. So it is red and it is quite nice. You can see that it has a high flower count, big nice bouquet of flowers on an upright in fluorescence and it's quite a healthy growing plant as well. Um, it is actually in a three inch pot that I simply slip potted up. Um, and so if you look in there, you can see all those roots, but really what I did is I just put that three inch pot and I put it in the four inch pot. And I probably did that because at the time it was probably flowering and I didn't want to repot it. So I just put it in a pot because it had new roots coming in or what, whatever the occasion might have been. But it seemed to grow quite nicely in that pot. Um, so this is just something that is blooming in my collection right now. Um, and I do have many more orchids that are in flower. So I will be making a video with everything that's in bloom. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but this is just kind of like a little treat. Um, to share with you guys before I make that video and upload it. But now without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the second part of this huge Sunset Valley Orchids spring haul because there's so many goodies. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Okay, you guys, so for this first orchid that I wanna share with you guys, it is in bud, and it is a hybrid of SLC Angels Fantasy Solar Flare, which actually has an FCC from the American Orchid Society, which is a very high award. Um, and it's crossed onto Potanara Memoria Jim Niku James, and that is an extremely, extremely yellow flower, and it has a very crystalline texture too, while the mother plant, or the pod parent, which in this case is SLC Angel's Fantasy Solar Flare. It has a very heavily pigmented flower with some beautiful yellow flares that make it look like flames. And I think that the cultivar name is quite fitting for this orchid actually. So um, both parents are heavily pigmented. One is extremely, extremely dark red with yellows. And then the other parent, the father, Jim Niku, is actually a very heavy yellow. So this is the plant right here. You will notice that the leaf is slightly purple and you might think to yourself why is it purple is it sick what the heck is going on but do not freak out this is actually pretty natural in hybrids um, it's simply the pigmentation manifesting itself into the leaf so i will be taking photographs for you guys to take a look at but there is a close-up there on the video camera and you'll see that it ha does have two three very nice buds right on there so i can't wait to share with you all what that looks like hopefully that'll be in an upcoming you know what's in bloom video um, but you'll notice that the leaf on the previous pseudobulb from last year is actually pigmented too so it's quite nice you will also notice that with every new growth it gets taller and taller like a ladder so that's a very good growing habit um, and i really enjoy this here so i'm extremely excited both parents are very exciting and i can't wait to show you what this looks like now up next, I do have some plants that I wanna share with you that have very, very good root systems. And it's amazing how both of these seedlings, they're completely different, but they're just as vigorous in terms of developing their root system. So this here is a very nice hybrid that is a chocolate drop hybrid. So chocolate drop, for those of you that don't know, it's a Cattleya. So Cattleya chocolate drop has very waxy flowers that are very deep red, but they're also waxy in their substance. And they have a very nice fragrance fragrance too. Um, very vigorous plants here and this is a hybrid of Potanara Rio Iwata by Cattleya Chocolate Drop and Potanara Rio Iwata which is the pod parent in this case uh, it does have a very large deep purple flower with a very big large lip as well and that lip does have a few stripings in there as well that are yellow so it's quite cool um, and when you cross these two together you get very large flowers that are high in flower count um, but they also have a very nice fragrance while retaining the waxy texture of the Cattleya chocolate drop. So this is two seedlings that I have of that cross. Um, I actually think I have a few more hitting 
around here somewhere probably from um an elder hall that i did um in the summertime um but these have quite quite the amount of vigor this one here does have a new growth and you will see that it has a beautiful root system just like its sibling the leaf is also quite wide and long as well. Um, if I can give you a size comparison of how long it is, um, it's eh, for my elbow, more or less. Um, so just to give you a comparison in the leaf size. Now this will be a bigger plant. Um, it will mature probably in you know about a gallon pot and it'll stand at approximately two and a half to three feet in height but it will be so rewarding with those very fragrant waxy flowers oh i am so excited for this next one i i love this species i know i say i love every species and i love every orchid hybrid um i'm an orcaholic as many of you are so you can probably understand why i have so many favorites but this definitely falls into one of my favorite species category. And it has a very large yellow flower with a huge lip. I mean, this lip is colossal in size. And I remember the first time that I saw the flower in bloom, I was just blown away by the way that the striations on the lip looked because it was really, really trippy. It was so crazy. It, you don't expect these kind of things to happen in flowers, but they do. It's quite astonishing. And so that is going to be Cattleya doiana variety aurea. And so I did manage to get a few seedlings of these um, from Sunset Valley Orchids new 2020 list. Um, they are quite, quite vigorous plants. Um, these are two of about four or five that I have. And I was a bit hesitant when I got these because I did purchase a Cattleya Dobiana division a few years back. Um, it did great all spring, summer, and then fall, you know, I started to notice some changes. And during the winter, it really just took a beating and I lost that plant to Black Rot. Thank you, Black Rot. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit hesitant to try these. Um, Prior to getting these ones though, um, I did get a few others while they were still really, really small and they seem to be growing quite well. They made it through the winter of 2019-2020. Uh, they're still alive and they're still doing quite good. I didn't get any sort of rot. Um, so I have some good hopes for these, but this is something that I'm just going to have to keep a close eye on because this species is a bit finicky to grow. But if you can grow this, it is so rewarding and the flower is as you can see from the pictures that I'm putting up right now, it's quite astonishing. Now here is a close up of one of the seedlings. You can see that it does have a very nice growth right there. It's not fully mature yet, but here is a previously matured pseudobulb and leaf and it looks quite nice. And you can see all the previous growths there as well. The number for this is 6398. T. So these have been culture scene treated. So hopefully we'll be able to get um, some good flowers from these. Maybe some triploids or maybe some four ends. We'll ha just have to see. Now here is the other seedling. And you can see that it does have a very nice pseudobulb as well. This will be standing approximately at about 15, 20 inches when it um, fully matures. Um, and the foliage is quite nice. It is a unifolia, as you guys can see, um, but quite astonishing. Beautiful color, large lips. What more can you want? And apparently I forgot how to drink water and that happened there in case anybody's wondering how that magically occurred. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this next orchid. And it is a hybrid of SLC Purple Doll Midnight Velvet AMAOS by Elsie Jose Diaz Castro Magnifica. And both of these plants are extremely, extremely nice in terms of their shape. They're very round and they resemble the typical classic Cattleya, you know, that you would see in the early 50s, you know, as a corsage orchids and everything with very large flowers. However, this is going to be a mini Cattleya and it's going to be quite short in its growing habit. It does have a new growth right here, and the offspring of this cross um, have been very, very nice purple shades. Some of them are more of an electric pink, and a few others are more of a deep, deep purple, but ultimately they're just something that's eye candy. And not only that, but they're fragrant. So when you have a fragrant, 
you know, orchid flower and it has nice color, nice shape. I mean, it's just like, ah, you know, hitting the jackpot. And this cross is certainly one of those. Now, I love this cross for many reasons, but one of them is because a few years back, I actually got a few plugs, which is essentially little orchids. Um, and I have one here to probably show you if I can pop it out. Whew. We're back. <laughs> so a few years back, I fought, I, I fought, I fought. <laughs> so a few years back, I bought a few plugs that are just like this. And essentially this is, you know, how orchids start, you know, in their early stages. And so I got many of these plugs from Sunset Valley Orchids and I basically grew them from a plug. Right now they're actually in three inch pots for me. And many of them have flowered and I've seen quite an amazing spectrum of flowers that just range from electric pinks to deep purples all of them are very nice and large as well um, so ultimately i have many of them that were in plugs and so i just kind of have like a deep connection with this cross because i grew many of them from being so tiny just like this little guy to now being in three inch pots and I mean, it's such a good cross and I like it so much that I even got some of Sunset Valley Orchids uh, 2020 remake. And so this is extremely exciting. It has a new growth. The suitables are quite plump. This hybrid altogether just grows quite nicely. Needed to pop that guy back in there to his little cell tray. Um, but where was I? So yeah, so they grow quite nicely. It's a very nice plant overall. So that's why I stocked up on this seedling. And you will notice that it does have a protective sheath right there. Very nice plump pseudo bulb. Very nice root system too. And here is a sibling as well that I got. And you can see that it does have a very nice plump pseudo bulb. A little bit of the pigmentation has gone into the pseudo bulb, which is quite nice. And it has a very nice long leaf. Uh, you can tell the dis that this particular orchid does have a unifoliate species in its background by the way that it's growing. Um, but ultimately, once again, very nice root system right there. So not much else I can say about this cross. Um, you guys have seen the pictures as well, so you can see how beautiful the parents are. And I'm also gonna be putting a few pictures of the first bloom seedlings right here. Um, so what you're seeing right now are actual representations of what this cross might flower. Some will be deeper in color, some will be lighter in color, but ultimately, they'll ultimately be nice. Now for the next set of plants that I'm going to be showing you, these are going to be some of the last things that I got in my haul, but they're very exciting. They're some of my favorite kind of hybrids too because they have Lelia anceps in their backgrounds. And Lelia anceps is a species from Mexico and Southern American countries too, which makes them very, very robust, also very vigorous, and they can tolerate down to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit and up to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's really, really nice to grow out here in Southern California. Many people actually grow them outside with very bright filtered shade, but I'm growing them here in my greenhouse where it's gone to be about 117 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime and all my Lilia Anceps and all my Lilia Ansep hybrids do quite well. So without further ado, I'm gonna be showing you this new hybrid that I obtained and it is a remake of a very very famous hybrid called LC Miss Wonderful. Now Fred Clark um, from SVO he made this um, in the regular variety but he also made some that are petaloids. Um, I did obtain a few of the petaloid ones which basically look like they have three sets of lips and I did get a few of those in their last um, release. So I'm quite excited for those. They're quite big. I am growing them currently in four inch pots. Now these ones here are the regular Miss Wonderful. They are growing quite well. You can see that they have very nice plump pseudo bulbs, very excellent root systems. The root systems are just something to admire. I really love that. This particular one does have a new growth coming in and you can see how plump the pseudo bulb is. Now I will remove this little protective sheath um, just so you guys can get a little bit of a better glimpse at this very massive pseudo bulb. So you can see it's so shiny, it's so plump, and it's just so healthy. And overall, the plant itself is growing quite vigorously. So this is just about ready to be repotted, actually. And now that it's spring, and we're all at home right now, what perfect timing, right? So this is just one of the seedlings that I got. Now this is another plant that I got from that same hybrid. You can see it has a beautiful root system already developing out of the pot. Um, I could have probably repotted this, um, maybe not even repot, but maybe just kind of 
slip it into a bigger sized pot just so that at least the roots have somewhere to grow into instead of just like this um but that's just my fault so i'll probably have to deal with this now which i will probably be misting to kind of make them a little bit more softer and easier to work with and probably put it in a four inch pot but this is the other sibling and it is quite tall you can see that um I mean, compared to like my torso to my head, I mean, I'm sure anyway, but like, it's still quite nice and tall. And you can see that it does have a unifoliate leaf, very long, once again, right back to my elbow test. So it's it's actually quite, quite long in its size. Um, so it does have a nice root system. I'm extremely excited for these. You have beautiful, beautiful flare. And so there are the plants once again, LC Miss Wonderful. I can't wait to see what this looks like. And I definitely can't wait to share this with all of you. So I will leave you guys with these nice roots here before we move on to the last plant that I wanna share with you. And before I let you guys go for the day, I'm gonna be sharing with you another Lelia Anceps cross that I'm extremely excited about. And in this case, it's going to be Lelio Catlea Magic Melody SVO by Lelia Anceps White Marble. And Magic Melody has a large white flower that it's crystalline in texture, so it shimmers in the sunlight. It also has a very strong fragrance and it has a very deep magenta, um, even fuchsia, I guess you would say. It's like a deep fuchsia, deep magenta lip which is very nice and striking because it's a very great contrast to the lighter colored flower. So not only does it have a white flower with a very deep colored lip, but it does have some flares at the tips of the petals. So some of the offspring will have flares on the tips, not all of them. Um, do I like the tips? Do I not like the tips? Uh, you know, it's still a pretty nice plant. It's beautiful regardless, but um, I think I'd be a little bit happier if it had some little purple tips at the edges of the petals there. So here we can see that it does have very beautiful roots. And you can see how plump the pseudobulb is. It's extremely vigorous. And for me to see a pseudobulb this plump right now, I can only imagine what next year's pseudobulb is going to be like. I'm sure it's gonna be massive. So this little guy right here, let's go ahead and admire him because I'm sure in the future, he's just gonna look incredibly, incredibly plump. So this is SVO7415. Um, I have been forgetting to be giving you all of these code numbers. I'll be sure to write them probably somewhere in the video just so that you guys know what they are. Well, everyone, that is going to conclude my video for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give a thumbs up and also subscribe to my Orchid channel. And I can't wait to catch you guys on my next video because we are going to be taking a look through the lens at what's currently in flower in my collection. So definitely stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming up very soon. But please take care until then. And I hope that all of you are doing well out there. So I can't wait to see you guys. Please take care and I'll catch you guys on my next video. But until then, peace.